Hey there, you cool cat and kittens. This is Miss Chambers coming to you from Thomasville, North Carolina. This is our second video on tone and mood. I want you to know that we are gonna go over some things we talked about yesterday, what tone is, what mood is, and why they're important to our reading. We're gonna look at a new poem. We're gonna look at annotating that poem. Annotating, note is in that word. When I take notes, it helps my brain remember. So annotating is a strategy that all good readers use, whether you're a student or you're a teacher or you have a job that you're learning new things about. We all need to be able to think about our reading. Annotating helps us do that. Tonight's poem is going to be Washington. Do you know anybody or any place named Washington? I think of George Washington. So I wonder if the poem that we're going to read is about George Washington. He was our first president and a super cool cat uh, who really helped America become the fabulous country that we live in today. So mood and tone are two things that kind of set the stage for what we're reading about, okay? Uh, remember, tone is how the author felt when writing their speech and words, okay? Mood is the atmosphere. So mood is the atmosphere of a story or a poem. That's the setting, and we've talked about setting with theme. The overall setting, the mood can be romantic, dark, lighthearted, or gloomy. All right. Let's try this one more time. Um, we're going to look at this poem uh, called Washington by Nancy Bird Turner. Um, and this poem, I'm going to write tone and we're going to make that red. Okay. And this side, we're going to write mood and Washington by Nancy Bird Turner. He played by the river when he was young. He raced with the rabbits along the hills. He fished the for minnows and climbed and swung and hooted back at the whippoorwills. Strong and slender and tall he grew, and then one morning the bugles blew. Over the hills the summons came, over the river's shining rim. He said that the bugles called his name. He knew that his country needed him, and he answered, coming, and marched away for many a night and many a day. Perhaps when the marches were hot and long, he'd think of the river flowing by or camping under the winter sky, would hear the whippoorwill's far off song, boy or soldier, in peace or strife, he loved America all his life. Let's talk about mood first in this one. Let's see here, mood is green. In mood, we're gonna talk about places. He played by the river when he was young. He raced with the rabbits along the hills. He fished for minnows and climbed and swung. Mm. He hooted back at whippoorwills. Strong and slender and tall he grew, and then one morning the bugles blew. Here right here where it says he climbed and swung, this makes me think of a tree. I, we swing in trees, we climb trees, and where he fished in the, for minnows, I'm wondering if that is part of that river too. Okay. Over the hills the summons came, somebody called to him, over the river's shining rim. He said that bugles called his name. He knew that his country needed him. USA, USA. He answered coming and marched away for many a night and many a day. Perhaps when the marches were hot and long, he'd think of a river flowing by or camping under the winter sky. I'm going to underline that, camping under the winter sky. Would hear the whippoorwill's far off song, boy or soldier, in peace or strife, he loved America all his life. America is a place. Very good. So, a couple of the settings that we see are river and hills and more rivers and hills and country and river and 
uh, ooh, camping and America. Okay, so let's go through river. He played by the river when he was young. When we're playing by the river, how does that make us feel? Well, we're happy and we're uh, carefree. He raced with rabbits along the hills. If you're racing outdoor, think about when it first turns summer and you're all by yourself and you get to go play for the first time and you don't have to go to school. What's that feeling? I want to run with the rabbits. And Well, I, to me, I bet you he felt free. He fished for minnows, climbed and swung. Over the hills, the summons came. Hmm. Over the hills, the summons came. So in these hills and rivers, he's carefree. But if somebody summons me, that means they're asking me to come to them, right? So over the hill, that means there's people on the other side of that hill. Hmm. I think about like when I was first summoned to come to school, that I would be really excited to come to school, but I'm also like, oh, now I have to go be serious. So this might be a little bit more serious. Over the river, shining rim. He said the bugles called his name. They're probably asking him to be responsible because now he has to do something other than run and play and be free like he was doing with the fish and the minnows and the rabbits in the river. He knew that his country needed him. Oh, I know when I need somebody or somebody needs me that I feel obligated. It means like I have to do something. But I also know if somebody needs me, I want to help. So I'm going to put the word help to remind me. Okay. If we keep going down, it says he, he'd think of the river flowing by. Oh, so he's remembering back to this first river. And how did that first river make him feel? That first river made him feel happy and free. Okay. And camping under the winter sky, oh, if you have ever been camping, the best feeling in the entire world is falling asleep under all those stars where nobody's playing on their phone and nobody's playing on their computer. There's no TV, there's no radio, it's quiet. Sometimes you hear the bugs playing sounds at night. Um, it's restful, it's calm. Okay. The other, the last place that we talked about is America. He loved America all his life. Hmm. America is some place that gives me pride. I'm proud to be American. I'm proud to live in America. Um, I'm proud to be part of the nature. So it's beautiful. Um, it's a beautiful place to be. Ooh, let's move this guy so we can see better. Come, come now. Um, he loved America all of his life. Okay, so now let's go over here. Put that up. Let's talk about tone for a minute. Remember, tone is what the author tells us. Um, what's the tone? What's this? What does the author sound like when he's writing this? And remember, I'm going to go back and read again, even though I've already read it, to make sure I understand how the author sounds. He played by the river when he was young. He raced with rabbits along the hills. He fished for minnows and climbed and swung. And who did back at the whippoorwills? Strong and slender and tall he grew. And then one morning the bugles blew. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna find some adjectives here to help me understand this. He played, oh, wrong color. He played, he raced, he fished. He climbed and he swung, he hooted. He was strong and slender and tall. He grew. This to me, all those tones are very free, very kid friendly, very happy, okay? Let's keep going and see if we have a different tone. Over the hills, the summons came, over the river's shining rim. He said the bugles called his name. He knew that his country needed him. 
he answered coming and marched away for many a night and many a day. So a summons came, the bugles called his name, his country needed him, he answered coming and he marched away. Okay, so I want you to think about in that summertime when your mom calls you in from playing outside or your mom tells you to stop playing your video games and come do something, you're being summoned. Do we always like being summoned? I don't like being summoned. I want to finish what I'm doing. I have a job to do. Summons is someone. Uh, they're being told what to do. What about he said the bugles called his name? Someone's calling him. So he's again being told what to do. He knew that his country needed him. His country needed help. Needed help. He answered coming so he said he would help them right just like you do with your mom and dad right i'm coming or your grandma or your grandpa or your auntie or your uncle or your friends i'm coming right and marched away marching is very different than running if we look up here it talks about how he raced with rabbits that's swift that's like i'm gonna go super fast well when i march away it's like i have a job to do this stanza sounds a lot different than this stanza. A free kid who's friendly and happy and playing. Ooh, I like that word. Playful. I'm going to add that up here. Playful. And then down here, this guy, he's being told what to do. America needed help. He had a job to do. Let's see down here what it says, okay? Perhaps when the marchers were hot, when the marches were we're hot and long. Okay, so we know it's hot and long. And they're marching, so they're not running and racing with the rabbits anymore. He would think of the river flowing by or camping under the winter sky. He would hear the whippoorwill's far-off song. Boy or soldier, in peace or strife, he loved America all his life. So this part is where we see the two come together. Perhaps when he marches, remember marching, he's got a place to go. March is steady. So he's steady and he has that job to do again. Okay. Hot and long. Oh, that sounds tedious. It sounds like a lot of work. He would think of the river flowing by. When you have a job to do and you don't want to do it, do you ever daydream? He's daydreaming of better times. And then lastly, would hear the whippoorwill's far off song, boy or soldier. So in one of these, he's a boy. One of these, he's a soldier. In peace or strife, good times or bad times. He loved America all his life. Mm, he respected America. Okay? So when we look at tone and mood, it really helps us understand where this author is coming from. So now we're going to go through and we're going to look at some questions that have to do with this poem and see if finding the tone and finding the mood really help us understand what's happening here. So he said that the bugles called his name. He knew that his country needed him. The poet includes these lines to show that Washington, A, heard the sounds of nature. Are bugles the sound of nature? Nope, not at all. Um, wanted to travel the country, maybe. Played a musical instrument. Did he play the bugle? It does not say that. No, no, no. Felt patriotic towards his country. So now I gotta think back and I'm gonna go look at my thing. I'm looking for, did he want to travel the country or did he feel patriotic towards his country? Well, when the bugles called his name, he said that the bugles called his name and that his country needed him. 
the country needed help. He needed a job to do. It wasn't about finding a place to travel to. He felt patriotic and he needed to be called uh, to do a job. Perhaps when the marches were hot and long, he'd think of the river flowing by. The poet includes these lines to suggest that whenever Washington felt weary and tired, he would find shade in a river. No. Wrong color. Nope. Cool himself in the river? Does it say he jumped in the river? It says he'd think of a river. No. Change his travel route to follow the river. Again, thinking, is that the same thing as changing? Nope. Recall a childhood experience about a river. Hmm. I think that's the closest because recall is the same thing as to think about. So I would say that's my answer. Okay. All right, guys. You did a great job today finding out uh, what tone and mood are. Let's see uh, in your work this week if you can find tone and mood. If you need any help with it, feel free to email any of your teachers. We're all in this together and we're all helping each other out. Um, you can also email me. Uh, if you are in my Miss Chambers class, you may drop me a note. Hope you have a great day. It was good hanging out with you. We miss you.